Hi, I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. Welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, we did a faux stained glass project using shrinky dinks and Sharpies, and I still cannot escape the urge to want to do fake stained glass projects. So we're doing another one today. So this week, we're gonna be making a faux stained glass window hanging that you can put up in your window. I decided to make mine a spooky spider web, but you can really do this project with any pattern that you like. It's all up to you and your own imagination. Now you can do this using pre-made stained glass paints that they sell at the craft store, but you can also do it a lot cheaper with Elmer's glue and food coloring or acrylic paint. And today I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's get into it. For this project, you will need the following. A piece of plexiglass. I use this eight inch diameter circular piece that is one eighth of an inch thick. Gallery glass black letting paint. Elmer's clear glue. Food coloring. Acrylic paint. I wanted some shimmery pieces, so I also used gallery glass hologram shimmer paint. Paint brushes. Either an electric or hand powered craft drill, or if you have an electric drill, drill bits for plastic. Jump rings. Chain or string to hang the finished piece. And pliers. To start, I traced the plexiglass circle onto a piece of paper. Then I carefully cut it out, making sure that it was even all the way around and folded it in half a couple of times so that I could get to the center point easily. Then with a pencil and ruler, I went and made the baselines for the web, going around in 90 degree and 45 degree angles, and then adding some extra ones in there here and there just to get the straight line base of the web going. From there, I went around with pencil and just started to add in those swoopy lines that connect and make the iconic web shape. I played around having some connect to each other, some not really, just getting it to where I liked it personally. I don't want it to be too symmetrical and perfect. I want it to be a little more funky or more realistic to what a real web might look like. Once I was satisfied with the pencil drawing, I took a Sharpie, went back in and traced all those lines again so that they would be really easy to see when I laid the plexiglass piece over it and traced it with the letting paint. Before adding the letting paint, I taped down both the stencil and the piece of acrylic to a table so that nothing would move during the tracing process. Then I began to very carefully apply the letting paint, following my stencil, moving slowly and adding consistent pressure so that everything would look as even as possible. If you make a mistake here, it does say that you can take some warm water and some soap and a little cloth and wipe it off right away. Then you wanna dry it and then you can continue. You can't really fix it once it's dry. That being said, it does take 24 hours to dry. So once I was done with the letting process, I had to let it sit for a full day or maybe a little longer before I could start adding in my stained glass colors. Before I started painting, I laid out where I wanted to put color down. I knew I wanted to have a mixture of frosted and clear finishes as well as lighter and darker purple in my web. The majority of the stained glass colors would be done with clear Elmer's glue. That includes the frosty pieces, the light purple, and the deep purple. For the shimmer portions, I used gallery glass hologram shimmer paint. I also opted to leave some of the acrylic without any paint or glue so they would stay completely clear. Now I knew that anything with the gallery glass hologram shimmer paint would take 24 hours to dry, so I wanted to do that last. So I decided to start with the Elmer's glue portion first. I wanted to start by adding in some color, so I started with the light lavender color. I mixed one drop of purple food coloring into the Elmer's clear glue, and then with a paintbrush, carefully applied thin coats in the appropriate sections. And when a coat was done, I would take a hair dryer and on a low setting, I would just wave it over it until it dried completely before adding continuous layers. If you don't let the glue dry in between layers, it will kind of get streakier or it'll pull up the layer that you just put down. So you wanna be sure that each layer is completely dry before you continue to add on onto it. I did two coats of this clear lavender color before moving on to the white frosty parts. Now to make the glass frosty, I think you could probably get away with using regular Elmer's glue here, but I didn't have any on hand. So I took clear Elmer's glue and added in one small drop of white acrylic paint, mixed that up and used that to do these layers. Again, I would do one layer at a time, blast it with the hairdryer, add another layer, blast it with the hairdryer and so on. And for this frosty layer, I added three coats total. Next, I wanted to add in the darker purple. So I took the existing purple I'd made earlier, added in one drop of blue food coloring and added two more drops of the purple in, mixed it up to get a deeper, richer purple, and then started applying that to the appropriate areas. At this point, I also thought that the lighter lavender part was a little too pink, so I added one coat of this new purple on top of it, and that was it. Again, blow drying in between layers. I think I did about three layers of this purple before I moved on. Lastly, it was time to add that hologram shimmer paint. So carefully going around in sections, using the nozzle, I would pour some out and then 
then use the nozzle to kind of help spread it around and make an even layer. It will look cloudy and kind of lumpy and like a big coat of paint, but it dries down really nicely. So just trust the process. Once that was done, I had to let it sit for another 24 hours to dry. On the third and final day of this project, it was time to drill some holes and add the hanging hardware. Now I have a little mini electric craft drill that I used for this process, but you can either buy a hand drill at Michael's or if you have an electric drill at home, you can find drill bits that go into plastic specifically. I took a ruler and marked off roughly where I wanted the holes to be and then drilled off camera. From there, I added in some gold jump rings so that the chains that I have had something to connect to and well, that's it, which means it's time for the reveal. Here it is. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think it does the trick and it looks even better in real life. I wish the camera picked it up a little bit better, but in real life, it looks more vibrant. Overall, this achieved exactly what I wanted to. I really wanted a stained glass piece, but since I don't know how to do that yet, it just made sense to do it this way. This was a really fun project and it is really easy. I do think that the hardest part is waiting. If you're impatient like I am, it is kind of annoying to have to wait a whole 24 hours for paint to dry, but in the end, it's so worth it. Honestly, without the dry time, I think this project only would take you a few hours anyway. It is a really fun craft and something that I could easily keep doing over and over again because it is really satisfying. Now, of course, I had to do a spooky spider web because I always need more spooky decor in my home. But if you were going to do your own faux stained glass at home, what would you make? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!